are forbidden. Some hold their hands folded on the breast, while others hold them at the navel. The real cause of all these differences lies in the Hadith. Kulun hezbun bimal ladahim farehun, i.e., each group being pleased with what it has in its hand. Deliverance from sin lies in perfect conviction. O ye who seek the Lord, open your ears and listen. Take heed that there is nothing like perfect conviction, which delivers you from sin. Conviction gives you the power to do good, and conviction alone can turn you into a lover of God. Can you turn away from evil without perfect conviction? Can you hold your base impulses in check without help of a sure light? Without this perfect conviction, can anyone bring about any real change in himself? Can you attain to any state of satisfaction and peace of mind without this perfect certainty? Can you at all win any real prosperity without it? In the wide world, is there any atonement which can give you the power to avoid such sin which man so much stands in need of? Can the fictitious blood of Jesus, son of Mary, deliver you from sin? O you Christians, refrain from uttering a monstrous falsehood, even such as would fain break this earth to pieces. For deliverance, Jesus himself had to depend on perfect conviction. He believed with conviction and was delivered. Woe indeed on those Christians who deceive the world by saying that they have been delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ, even when from head to foot they are drowned in evil. They do not even know who is their God. Their life is one of indulgence and ease. With the intoxication of wine in their head, they remain unaware of the life with God. And for them there is no share in the fruits of life as lived in purity. Always remember, therefore, you cannot come out of the darkness without firm conviction nor can you get the Holy Spirit. Blessed are they who have this conviction, and blessed are they who have been delivered from uncertainties and doubts, for they alone shall be delivered from sin. And blessed will you be when this great treasure of firm conviction is given to you, since on that day sin for you will come to an end. Sin and conviction cannot exist together. Would you ever knowingly put your hand into a hole which you see is occupied by a poisonous snake? Or would you remain standing where a shower of red-hot stones is coming down from some belching volcano? Or which forms the target of the thunderbolt from the skies? Or where a ferocious lion is likely to attack at any moment? Or would you live in a place where a dangerous plague is destroying mankind? Then, if you believe in God with the same firmness of conviction as you believe in the danger from a snake, or a thunderbolt, or a lion, or from a plague, it is not possible that you should defy him by disobedience, to incur punishment thereby, or that you should want to break the bond of sincerity and the loyalty which binds you to him. O ye people, who have been called to righteousness and truth, rest fully assured that the divine attraction will take its birth on you, and you will be washed clean with the ugly blot of sin, only when your hearts become brimful of firm conviction. Perhaps you will say that you have this conviction, but you should take care to remember that this feeling is not more than a delusion on your part. That firm conviction is most certainly not yours, for you do not display the conditions which necessarily must go with it always. You have not yet given up your sinful ways. You have not taken the first step which you ought to have taken the moment this firm conviction became yours. You do not yet fear sin as you should. You can very well think out the question in your own mind. A man never puts his hand into a hole which he knows to be occupied by a poisonous snake, nor does he ever knowingly partake of a food he has reason to believe has been poisoned, nor will he thoughtlessly walk into a thicket of trees which harbors a lion. Then how can your hand and your feet, your eyes and ears, dare to sin when you have the same degree of certainty in regard to the punishment and reward from God on your conduct in life? How in the name of reason can you throw yourself into a fire which you know will burn you to ashes? And always remember that the defensive ramparts built by firm conviction against sin are veritably as high as the heavens, so that Satan cannot scale them to get you after you have once properly built them up. Everyone who is purified is purified through firmness of conviction. It is conviction which gives you the strength to bear hardships, even to the extent of persuading a king to abdicate his royal throne and take the life of a mendicant. Conviction dissolves all difficulties. Conviction enables a man to see God. All ideas of any atoning sacrifice are false. For every kind of purity comes only from firm conviction. The only thing which delivers a man from sin and advances him in sincerity and steadfastness 
far ahead of the angels themselves, is conviction and conviction alone. All religions which fail to create this firmness of conviction are false. All religions which fail to show God by means beyond any shadow of doubt are false. And all those religions are false which contain nothing more than a handful of tales and fables about what happened in the past. Do not be satisfied with fables. God exists even now, as he did in days past. His powers too remain the same as they were in the past, and he is still capable of showing signs as he was before. Then why should you be satisfied with stories and fables alone? The religion is dead and destroyed, which contains nothing more than stories of miracles shown in the past, and the people are a dead people on whom God does not descend in grace and mercy, whom the divine hand himself has not come down to purify. As a man is drawn towards the joys of this world when he sees its attractions with his own eyes, similarly a man drawn towards God when he comes to know with perfect certainty that the spiritual joys are even sweeter. The appeal of divine beauty takes such a hold on his mind that everything else appears to him of no more value than mere trash. Man is freed from sin only when he comes to know of the power of God and of divine retribution on the basis of a firm conviction. Ignorance is the root of every fearlessness, and no one will ever be found devoid of the fear of God, even to the least extent who partakes of divine knowledge. When a householder knows a dangerous flood is advancing on his house, or that it has been surrounded by a fire on all sides, he will at once flee from it. Then how can you dare to leave your ways of life unaltered after your belief in the existence of God? in divine retribution and reward, has hardened into a film unshakable conviction. Therefore, open your eyes and carefully study the law of God operating in the universe. Do not be like rats, which only go digging and descending down into the earth. Be like a dove, capable of flying into the heavens, which feels happy only when it is flying in the pure air of the loftier regions. After taking the bath of repentance at my hand, Take care of what you do not remain unaltered in your former sinful ways. Do not be like a snake that remains as much of a snake after it has shed its skin as it ever was before. Remember death, which approaches you every moment, though you remain unaware. Do your best to purify yourself, for a man can attain nearness to what is purity par excellence only when himself he becomes pure, as far as possible. The way to attain purity is prayer offered in true humility of spirit. But the most important question is how to win the blessings. To this question, God himself has given the answer. He says, Vasta inu bisabre vasalat, i.e., seek help from God with prayer and perseverance. What is salat? It is a prayer addressed to God in true humility of spirit and the fullest awareness of his purity, his praiseworthiness, his holiness, coupled with a burning desire on the part of the devotee for divine forgiveness and for blessing on the Holy Prophet. Therefore, when you stand up for prayer, do not, like ignorant people, confine yourself to the prescribed Arabic text. For the prayers and the istakfar of many people is only formal, with no reality in it. When you stand up for prayer, do not, like ignorant people, confine yourself to the prescribed Arabic text. In addition to the prayers found in the Quran, which is the word of God, and in the Hadith, which is the word of the Holy Prophet, Address your petitions to the Lord in your own language, with heartfelt humility, which should leave a lasting effect on the mind. In prayer lies the remedy for the coming tribulations. You have no idea what the coming day has in store for you. Therefore, before the day dawns, pray every time that for you it should be a day of blessings and peace. O ye rich and wealthy!